destination. Because we've been around the world and we, 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 yeah. you know, find our babies. Kind of so, be. how did I get left out of that one? Okay, <laughs> I mean, hello, people. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, that's it. I'm starting my own show then. <laughs> Forget about it. You can travel with us. I that's need, right. See? I still need I content for my charity stream on Valentine's Day. I knew it, girl. If any cooks or drag performers or anything. Mm -hmm. Well, good evening, America, and welcome to It's Happening Out, the world's most popular live gay television talk show. We're sitting around the kitchen table tonight. It's 8 p.m. Wednesday, January 27th, and I'm your anchor, Al Ferguson. Uh, let's start the show tonight by meeting tonight's host, and this is a great one. First up is Power Infinity, our original host at It's Happening Out, right along with me. He is a hybrid diva, uh, diva, diva, <laughs> DJ, DJ, can brand hardly it. speak, and he's an LGBTQ political commentator and I would consider expert. Uh, good evening, Power. Good evening, Al, and good evening, uh, audience out there. Let's get this show on the road. That's right. And this <laughs> next up is Faye What? She's a radio host and has a popular YouTube channel. Next week, she is the anchor of the new television show, Happening Out Travel. The show will provide the news, travel steals and deals, and the best recommendations for LGBTQ travel post-pandemic. Good evening, Faye. Hi. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. And next up, please welcome another longtime member of It's Happening Out, and longtime I mean old, Chef Josie. No, I'm only kidding, of course. Uh, she is a Bravo TV top chef and the master of the popular champagne and oyster celebration restaurant, Bubbles and Pearls. Welcome, Chef Josie. There you have it, folks, okay? All you need to know about Chef Josie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And next, let's welcome Athena Dion as one of South Florida's brightest and most beloved drag performance entertainers. She is the CEO of the premier drag entertainment company in South Florida called Dream Queens. Welcome, Athena. Well, thank you for having me. Those eyes are a poppin'. Everything. And next up is David Hopkins. He is well known here in LGBTQ South Florida as an officer of the Lambda Men's Brotherhood. It's a nonprofit organization focused on building a legacy of gay philanthropy <laughs> for our community. I, that's an easy word. I don't know why I stumbled. David will share anchor duties with Faye Watt on the new travel show, Happening Out Travel, that premieres next week. Welcome, David. Thank you. I'm excited. It's a different kind of cruising that I'm used to talking about. Ah, <laughs> different kind of cruising. Finally, we are happy to have as a guest host tonight, Scott, uh, Scott Galvin. He is executive director of Safe Schools South Florida, a nonprofit focusing on providing safe space for LGBTQ youth. Scott is also the longest serving city councilman for North Miami. And again, long serving does not mean old, uh, is unlike uh, Josie, uh, and is the longest serving openly gay legislator in the state of Florida. He serves on the board of directors also for the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. You know them, of course, as AHF. Welcome, Scott, to It's Happening Out. Hey, glad to be here, and I hope not to get myself into too much trouble. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, we'll do our best on that, and uh, maybe, no, we won't. <laughs> All right, so good evening, America. We are the first and most popular live LGBTQ talk show in the world. So much to talk about tonight. Next on It's Happening Out. This week on It's Happening Out. Join us on... YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It all starts right now, live on It's Happening Out. Well, as I told you, we're sitting around the kitchen table and we're going to talk. So let's begin tonight with happening now breaking news. Most Senate Republicans declare Trump's trial is unconstitutional. Here's what this means for conviction. The trial for impeachment of Donald Trump was set this week. Of note was a vote to stop the proceeding on the grounds it was unconstitutional. 
55 senators voted to continue, including all 50 Democrats and only five Republicans. While the trial will commence on February 8th, it seems likely it will be symbolic in that regardless of the arguments, the Senate will not get 67 votes to impeach President Trump. That is an assumption here. The final breaths of the election and final breaths of the movement called Trump uh, means that we're at an end. What do y'all think about what uh, happened in the vote for the impeachment trial? I hate that you put the word breast and Trump in the same sentence because I really do love breasts and don't like Trump. Did I say breasts? I think it was breaths and he just said breath. it's breasts. Oh, but I was oh, thinking about breasts. Oh. <laughs> There's too much feminine energy. Hey, he only hears breasts. I said breath. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, look, what are we? What, what did we expect? We have 50 uh, Republicans in the Senate showing up as they have for the last four years. So what is the point? You know, it's going to take a lot of uh, backroom negotiations to get to the 67. But I think that uh, when this is all said and done, I think that, uh, you know, some of these Republicans are going to have to cross over into the brighter side, into the lighter side, and vote their conscience. Um, you know, Donald Trump is a traitor to our country, period. End of story. And he needs to be impeached. I, first of all, some of these lawmakers need to learn what the word unconstitutional means. It means contrary to what's said in the Constitution. And uh, this is murky water. The Constitution doesn't say anything about impeachment after the, the president's in office. So while it's uncharted territories, it's not unconstitutional. I think that the fact that um, the Republic cowards um, <laughs> Republic have cowards. no no appetite to um to really try this in the senate um really speaks to their hypocrisy when you look at benghazi uh the gop had no problem uh with 33 hearings and investigations over five years hillary's emails the gop had no problem with 20 plus hearings and investigations over five years trump's insurrection nah will pass no, because they don't want to admit that they'd be personally accountable for it. I'm curious in terms of uh, your general opinion. Let's say we don't get him impeached. We're not going to get to 67. That's what that Correction, Al. He is, correction, Al. He is oh, already impeached. Thank you. Uh, thank you. You're absolutely right. <laughs> thank you. Of Convicted. course. Uh, uh, he's been impeached by the House, um, the, the, um, the trial in the Senate. Let's assume he doesn't get to 67 seats, which is, unfortunately, uh, that's what this is looking for, or looking like. Then there is potentially going to be this vote of a simple 50-50 majority, or a majority vote, uh, to prevent him from running for office in the future. Would we be satisfied, would the LGBTQ community be satisfied with that action? I will, but, um, and somebody on this panel maybe educate me. I thought that we could only have that vote if in fact he was convicted in the Senate. So my question is, can we still have that vote which would stop him from running ever again if he's not convicted? Because that's what I want. Yeah, I think power is right. We have to wait till there's a 67 conviction and then they can take the separate vote. Mm. So it can't be done if he is not, um, uh, if, if we don't get to the 67, uh, then the simple majority vote can't be done? Correct. Oh, I did not know that until right this minute. Okay. So I guess we're not going to be satisfied. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any final thoughts about what we're watching on impeachment? He's, he's sitting on the beach at Mar-a-Lago, so uh, that's really watching something. Watching planes fly over at the estate <laughs> saying he was the worst president in the history yeah. of the country. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, you are watching an alive and unedited LGBTQ talk show. Anything can happen here tonight. If you're on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and click the bell for updates. If you're on Facebook, like us and share the video and start a watch party. It's super easy. Let's begin the show tonight as we talk around our kitchen table with what we call the meme of the week. And my goodness, is there a meme that crushed the Internet this week? And uh, it's called uh, Visiting Bernie Sanders. Look at this. <laughs> oh my God. I am living for Frumpy Bernie in every, every single meme. My uh, Facebook banner on the top is currently the, the picture from The Shining <laughs> of the entire like out, uh, Overlook uh, cast Hotel. party with Bernie Sanders tucked in. I saw face. one that was like that with the two uh, twins in The Shining. Yeah, with, with the two in the middle. <laughs> meme was when it said, y'all put Bernie everywhere except in office. <laughs> oh, <Right. boo>. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
<laughs> so if, people are just better in some positions. If a friend of mine gotten, took Sharon right? Stone and Basic right? Instinct right? and put yeah. uh, uh, Bernie Sanders right between her legs. And I was like, really, guys? I mean, it's like, where's it's like going too far. <laughs> You know, uh, there were estimates uh, that uh, the memes that took place uh, this week, uh, like this one, that over a billion views of the memes uh, of him in the gloves. Isn't that quite Easy. amazing? He was everywhere. Yeah, he was and everywhere. he's selling and t-shirts right now, too. And, and how wonderful was it that the gloves were made by a lesbian yeah. school teacher? We're, right? Actually, we're <laughs> going to talk about that in just a bit. All right, let's move on out of our meme and let's play our drinking game. This is my favorite part of the show. Uh, you can, I've got shots here, I'll hold mine up, I'm drinking vodka, but uh, many of our hosts are drinking water, Hello, no water. problem at all, and uh, we invite you at home to uh, have whatever liquid you would like and play right along with us. Uh, Al, are you sure you should, Al, are you sure you should be drinking? You called me Diva, you called Scott Scat. Oh. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Did I say Scat? Yes. yes. He started yeah, early. Did. He's talking yeah. about breasts and Trump. Oh, wait, no, right, you know, exactly. You know, America, most of my friends would allow these uh, these Biden gaffes to go un, uh, un uh, clean lighted. But, but you're not the leader uh, of the free world. Exactly right. True. <laughs> All right. Well, our game is uh, yes or no, and it's called I'd Swallow That. And we invite you at home to play right along with us as I ask our host four questions. I've got four of them tonight. If they agree, they're going to take the shot. If they disagree, well, it's going to be a damn long night for me. Uh, everybody ready? Then let's play I Swallow That. Question number one. This is the first week of Biden-Harris. I'd swallow that. This has been the most amazing LGBTQ week of my lifetime. Mm. What do y'all think? I, I would have everybody give a shot except for me. <laughs> um, I, I would say that uh, gay marriage and Obama's support in 2015 or so were stronger. We're, yeah, yes, this is you. fixing thank mistakes you. that someone else made. It's not progressing us. I, I personally think that this this week represents the direction that we're headed in in securing the LGBT. Um, you know, existence in this world and our place in society. Uh, you know, it, it, there have been other times in history where we've, we've had uh, these celebratory moments, but this week really signals to all of us in the LGBTQ community that we're headed in the right direction to never having to worry about a president like Trump entering into our politics and stealing and taking away all of our rights. Hmm. I, I, I would say I didn't, I didn't take the shot, but I would say that this week falls um, in third place. The first place being, let me echo what Scott said, when we won the right to, um, to marriage, that was probably the best week for me. The mm -hmm. second, I would say, was in 2019 when we celebrated um, 50 years of Stonewall. That was an amazing, amazing mm -hmm. week and celebration of, of our community around the world. And then this week is a close third. Mm. The, the I have to agree with power. Can I spit mine back up? <laughs> <laughs> the, past, the past like year and a half have been like shoots and ladders, and we just like slid down that long shoot. And now we're going up a good ladder, but it's still you know right direction. But we still need to catch up back yeah. to where we were. You know, uh, the, all of your broad observations are interesting because uh, the foundation of the seeds that were planted this week, uh, we are going to have a very bountiful harvest to come. That has definitely been seeded this week. Let's move on. Question number two. A new Trump, a new Trump, ooh, anybody shudder, may enter politics in 2022, and it affects South Florida, the gayest place on planet Earth. I'd swallow that. I'm actually worried that Ivanka Trump may be the future in Florida. Cool. I ain't gonna swallow that. <laughs> I ain't swallowing that either. I'm not even gonna give that any kind of energy. Yeah. Oh, I needed the shot just to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, thoughts? Yeah, that's not yeah, happening. I, I don't know weird. in what what um, you know other dimension, okay, that that you're living in now, but that is not happening. 
Trump, this Trump, any of these Trumps are going to have to go into hiding after the last four years, and they're going to spend a long time reflecting on their actions. I mean, not I don't really think they're going to be reflecting on anything, but they are definitely going to feel the pressure. You know, this is just not going to pass, and it's not something that they can simply sweep under the carpet. I completely wow. disagree with I did. you. I, I, I know I was going to say there are very rare times that I disagree with my sister Josie, but I have got to disagree. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. Not because I think that she's wrong in the fact that they need to go somewhere, but because this is Florida. This is Florida. If this it's foolish, it's come. Florida. This is the place that Zimmerman got acquitted. This is the place where... Um, Casey where, Anthony. where Casey Anthony got acquitted. I mean, if it's nonsense, it's here in Florida. So this, if there's any yeah. place that this it can is, be possible, this is the place. This is the yeah, place I, where Gillum got into bed with a gay rent. Oh wait, no, that's not. <laughs> that wasn't. Florida, Florida, Florida. My, my view on it Keep is flat. if the issues of the sixth could be swept under the rug so quickly, and the Trump family can have such yeah. cult following. She'll get all the traction she needs. Oh, God. Yeah. I think, I think it's a slam dunk, whatever she runs point. for. Yep. They're going to be around. I, I don't think I, Trump likes to reflect or to be quiet about anything. Mm. I think the minute he sees an opportunity for another spotlight, he's going to take it or he's going to shove one of his kids in front of it. And mm -hmm. you know, we're just going to have to deal with it at that point also. But at least we have a better yeah. understanding of uh, what he I, is. I, I want to call attention to Scott's comment um, uh, on the slam dunk. Uh, the, the conversation right now is heavily leading that in 22, she is going to run directly against Marco Rubio or, Mark, or for Marco Rubio's seat if he doesn't run. Either way, that's where her eye is. Um, Scott, do you think that that's a slam dunk? If she runs for that Senate seat, she's going to win? Oh, yeah. No, there's no doubt. She can pick and choose at this point. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the, we'd like to think, living in our liberal bubble, that the Trump family is just going to fade away or be embarrassed. There is no shame in their game. She'll be back. She'll be our governor. Um, she'll be our senator or both. I don't know. Um, and we got a long way to go in this uh, struggle. Scott, you you know that uh, uh, Ivanka and Jared are your neighbors now. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I I have a flaming bag that I left on their doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move to question number three. More than 30,000 30, LGBTQ Americans have died of COVID-19. That's not a number you hear very much, except at Q News tonight, and it's happening out. I'd swallow that. I am happy with how the vaccine rolled out for the first 45 days. I'm sober as hell tonight. I ain't drinking shit. <laughs> <laughs> what do y'all think? So, hell no. It's been horrible. Um, I don't know. Okay, so I can't speak for Broward or, or, or South Florida, but I know up here in Central Florida where it's I am. It's as bad here as it is up in Polk and Hillsborough. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Because it's really bad here. Like, we're always the last to get everything. We are, I mean, it's just so backwards here. And um, there's a lot of um, elderly people that cannot get the shots in their arm. And remember, in Florida, 65 or older, that are eligible for these shots, but yet the shots are still not rolling out the way they're supposed to, even for those that are eligible. So it's not good. I, I have to point out, America, just to illustrate Power's point, right now in the shots you're looking at, look at him very closely. He's illuminated by candlelight. Uh, that's how backwards. Uh, like, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of folks that are coming from Central Florida that are coming down here to get their shots because they just cannot get an appointment up there. I mean, uh, no, I'm not happy how this rollout has gone. But what do we expect? I mean, you know, this is like the whole free world needs this vaccine. It's not going to be an easy an easy thing. There's going to be some bumps and hurdles mm -hmm. and we'll get through it. Yeah, and and I heard recently that they found that tourists are coming into Florida and basically taking the shots that are for Florida residents. So, I mean... Stop that, Josie. But I mean, after how many were coming here from other countries and getting their shots because they had moolah? I mean, come on. We're, we're not doing as terribly as we could be, which is why I took the shot. It's messy, but we haven't faced a, a vaccination requirement like this since polio. Um, we start from scratch with almost no advance warning, a lot because of our federal leadership, but uh, I think it's being handled the best it could be on the short notice and with the short um, backup it got from the federal government. You know, the one, uh, can, I everyone, can, uh, go ahead. can I just say one more important thing? I was going to say this, save this for what's on your mind, but I'll do something else. Um, I just heard tonight 
that a, a new CNN study shows that twice as many white Americans are getting have the shots already than Latinos or blacks. Yes. And something that one of the um, Biden administrators um, health officials said is that we really need to start focusing these shots in communities that are high, highest at risk. And so well, again, the fact that that white Americans are getting these shots in such um, you know, exorbitant numbers and the people that really need them in the communities that really need them aren't is a, another sign of the fact that black lives and brown lives really don't matter. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's move on in uh, I-1211 uh, to question number four. This has been the biggest public support week, arguably, for the trans community in history in the United States this week. But the far right has gone all trans fully by saying the LGBTQ community does not support Biden's trans embracement. I'd swallow that. I think LGB will stand against the T attack by transphobic America. Ooh, and I'm going to drink my extra shot to that. Stand well. against the attack. Stand, stand against the attack, that, right? That, or against uh, L, G, and B will yeah. stand against the attack on T. Not being a member of the trans community, I can only speak from my observations. Um, one thing I've noticed from the community at large is people will support those they can understand, have empathy for. The trans community has often been kind of in the shadows, even of the gay community, just like we were in the shadows in the 70s and 80s. As people become more familiar with the community through media like Pose, like Gottmik <clears throat> being on uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, they build that sense of empathy. They're seeing the struggle that our trans brothers and sisters are going through, and they're horrified by it, and I, I've seen it in the community in general, a lot more support for the trans members. Let me just say, I think the LGB will stand against the attack on Facebook and through posts and things like that, but I don't think it'll necessarily be enough. I think that the LGB really needs to stand up even more for the T than Do, does that mean that y'all do not think, uh, Tucker Carlson suggested this uh, Friday on Fox News, you do not think that using T is going to be a wedge that divides through on the LGBT. You don't think that that argument that Fox News, Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, Laura Ingram are arguing about all of the trans embracement by Listen, the Listen, that, that is just a seed that the conservative news uh, is trying to plant in our community. Mm -hmm. And we're smarter than that. We're uni more united than that. And the reality of it is this, when, when there's not a, um, an issue, maybe the LGB doesn't support and fully embrace the T, right? We've had that conversation on the show many, many times. But when we get attacked, any member of our community gets attacked, we support each other. And that's what it comes down to. And right now, uh, when we have the support of our president who is coming and, and standing for LGBT rights, and equality, uh, the conservative movement is not going to have not even legs to stand on in this mm -hmm. argument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, conservatives are trying uh, to use what was, uh, what was the um, What was the, the percentage um, of, do you know the percentage of gays in our community that voted um, for Trump? Wasn't it 20-something percent? 28%. 20, okay, so 28%. So that's, that's about the, uh, the percentage amount that will not be standing for the T in our community. Mm -hmm. That at the national, uh, at the national LGBTQ debate that we uh, hosted. Yeah. Let's Not let's move out of I'd swallow that interesting conversation. We're going to do a bit more trans conversation tonight around the kitchen table. Next, let's catch up with the news that we call from either Hollywood or world of entertainment. And speaking of trans, we call it celebrity hot topic of the week of news that relates to entertainment or media. Watch this trailer for the upcoming docu series on trans lives in America under Trump. It is fascinating. It is called Trans in Trumpland. Now, it's about three minutes in this commercial, but we think it is highly worthwhile that you stay with it every second. Watch this. 
I will do everything in my power to protect our LGBTQ citizens. A transgender woman brutally attacked in Texas. She is the fourth transgender homicide victim in Kansas City. So the Trump administration has illegally defined transgender it's out suicide. of existence. They found the body of discrimination. You know what I am? <laughs> Do you know what I am? A child of God, a child that is deserving of as much love as you. That's who I am. How does it feel to you to think about that you were once detained here at this facility? They thought I was crazy for saying that I was a trans person. I was housed with a hundred men. They're males who've been detained for so long, and for them to see a a female, it's... <sighs> for, for almost my whole life, I haven't felt at home in my body. Public schools no longer required to allow transgender students to use the bathroom of their choice. I think the bathroom has always been a tool for uh, controlling people. The president has announced on Twitter that there will be no more transgender service members in the armed forces. This particular administration has made it okay to hate again. It has affected the way people are treated. I just, I wanted to show you something that I brought with me. So this was actually me when I was 12. Um, you know, I just want to let you know that no matter what the president says about you, you exist and you're human. And to realize that the human being is not separate from nature, but is a part of it. If you have the support of your friends, you have the support of your family, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. Our generation and the young trans people today will continue to fight for our right to exist in the United States and in the world. Trans people, we're not contagious, we're not no disease. Accept us, love us, we're people. If enough light shines, people will find a way. Shine that light. Wow, 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 wow. What do y'all think? I can't wait to see it. Trans wow. and trans. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty powerful. Not to make a pun, but that was that was powerful. And um, I, I sometimes wish that some of the people that are so transphobic, um, I think phobia really stems from ignorance. And sometimes I wish that you could take some of these people that are so ignorant in their transphobia and just sit them down in the auditorium and just let them watch um, and get to know, because that's how you break those barriers is by knowing and actually having those connections, real life connections with people that you feared or that you don't really know too much about. That's the first thing I thought when I was watching this commercial. I said, how many people is this going to educate now? You know, including the L and the G and the B, like we were talking about, that don't even know the struggle mm -hmm. that the trans people were going through in the last four years. You know, news that didn't even affect people that are not trans. They didn't even know how it was affecting the trans community. And I think this is a really big, it's going to be a big eye opener for that, for the other people. I don't yeah. think Trumpsters were care nor watch the documentary themselves. So, I mean, let's be realistic here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hit certain people. It's going to hit our community. I hope so. And it might educate, like you said, Athena. But, you know, it's, God, we need some so people, much more visibility that it's crazy. Some people don't want to be educated. Like a certain former host of It's Happening Out, <coughs> Andrew Brett, who blocked me recently, uh, who made a very dehumanizing post about the new, uh, newly point transgender member of Biden's cabinet. Um, refused to call her by her name or even call her her kept calling her it and by her dead name and it's it's disgusting yeah, well, and Scott, I, I'm, I'm sorry David I didn't mean to interrupt no, no, that was all I was saying it's just some Scott, I'm curious um, you um, you're uh, the CEO of safe schools here in South Florida how does how does this wash over you in terms of, uh, of your organization's principal goal in terms of making identity um, a safe issue in school? 
Yeah, obviously it's really tough. You know, Dade County Public Schools does not have any type of rule that allows for gender, gender neutral bathrooms. Um, we're actually going to be on a call tomorrow morning with that Dade County uh, Superintendent of Schools to talk about that. Um, like the video said, these kids are human. These adults are real people. Uh, at safe schools, we see the struggles that they have inside the classroom. Um, and we've got a couple of the young LGBT, uh, in this case, T uh, hosts on our show. Um, so we're really working hard to make sure it's all inclusive. Um, and, and that video goes a long way to proving that. Yeah. Any other uh, thoughts? Trans and Trump plan. I'm curious, like where does someone go if they want to have, if they have trans questions? You know, here in South Florida, we're blessed. We can go anywhere and find a trans, or a, an incredible representation of trans. But if you're in middle America, like what do you do? Google it, like where do you go? What do you do? This would might be the only way for you to see uh, what a trans person goes through in daily life. Yeah. yeah. There's no answer because we know what the answer is. Uh, the, the rural isolation out of the big metro areas that have big LGBTQ populations and 501Cs that serve those needs, it doesn't exist. You know, one observation that I wanna make, um, we reported, and this is brand new, that of what you just saw, super powerful, obviously. Um, uh, Power's observation is a bullseye for me, um, and for me, because I remember a conversation that I had at the end of 2019 or early 2020 on this show with Aaron Phoenix. And at Chef Josie's restaurant where we were broadcasting from, and I remember having a very heated argument with, with Aaron about how the trans community needed to do more to incorporate and try to explain why they don't get more support. And I've thought about that conversation a thousand times because what I zeroed and focused in on was the economic strength of the trans community. I watched this and when I saw it this week and I watched it live for the first time on Q News tonight, those words came back and haunted me because I thought, Al, you were so incredibly stupid. Period, that's it. I was just stupid because I didn't realize how hurtful those words were. And I didn't understand why Aaron Phoenix was so hurt and then so agitated in the response to those words. And power hits the bullseye. Because when I watched Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity and Laura Ingram on Friday night destroy the trans community and what Biden had done in the first days, I realized, oh my gosh, my words are so similar to all three of them. And then there was humiliation and wanting to retract the words back into my mouth. And I said on Q News tonight, gosh, I really wish I could have this three minutes of uh, trans and Trump land and Tucker Carlson be sitting next to me. I would love that. Because I would turn to him and go, you and I are diametrically opposed, but we thought the exact same way. The difference is, I used to think like you, but I, out of ignorance, became more educated and more empathetic, and therefore become a very valuable G in the support of our T and our LGBT community. I believe every single word I just told you. Any final thoughts? That's what I was saying when I thought it would educate people watching this. I didn't think it was going to turn any Trumpsters over to, to our side, but people do not realize how ignorant the L, the G, and the B are to the T's issues. It, you think you, you know. We think we support it. We really do, but we don't. And that was a perfect story that you just said right now. And I'm sure there's millions of stories that are like that, that you think you're a supporter, but you're really not. And it's not the trans people's jobs to do it. it their job is to exist. You know what I mean? And it's our jobs to help them and to protect them and to support them and to uplift them because they're doing enough by just existing. They're fighting a bigger fight than we know. And we need to be there for them. We need to be their legs in this fight as well. Yeah. I just remind everybody, Aaron Phoenix, I hope you heard the words that I just shared for you. You continue to be a host at It's Happening Out and we know that you're going through some tough times. But I do hope 
uh, you see and hear the words that I just shared. Well, that is our discussion on entertainment. Next, we report that Happening Out Television Network tries very hard to support our LGBTQ community. An example is here at the Sunshine Cathedral. This is the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale, and we're broadcasting from our permanent set in supporting that partnership. We're in full reconstruction, painting, and all kinds of things here. Uh, the network broadcasts the largest LGBTQ religious broadcast in the world, with more than 30,000 people watching every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, and it's totally live. We encourage you to tune in. Our campaign of sponsorship proudly supports Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. Watch this. We'd also like to thank our set designer, Concept of Modern Living, here in Fort Lauderdale for making this set and this amazing queer church campus possible. And finally, we'd like to thank Happening Out Hotel Sponsor, Best Western I-95 Fort Lauderdale. This is the closest and best uh, choice to the famous Wilton Drive, and our host and guest stay at this LGBTQ ally partner. We encourage you to stay here when you are visiting South Florida. It's happening out. We like to bring attention uh, to the LGBTQ community of what we consider some of the best things of the week. And, uh, and this week, um, Senate Leader Chuck Schumer, or Schumer accomplished this, that because he suggested that Donald Trump excited us, at all of us, this week. But not in the way you think. Watch this. Make no mistake. There will be a trial, and when that trial ends, senators will have to decide if they believe Donald John, Donald John Trump incited the erection, insurrection against the United States. <laughs> Does anybody ah! have an erection right now? I got the power. When I know he flew power off the White Trump House. But... Incited power to an erection. <laughs> was that the first time um, erection was ever said in the hall there? Oh my God. I mean, Trump to Trump and erection in the same sentence gives me the opposite. <laughs> right? Kill it. Oh my God. I don't think he's inciting any erections. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I, I won't come to our politician to ask about erections, but uh, any any other comments about? Uh, yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch that with a ten foot. I'm sorry, a ten inch pole. <laughs> nah, funny joke. Yes, that's a funny joke. All right. Well, let's move on. Uh, we, we, did we all perform as 800 pound gorillas there? Yeah, I think we did. All right. Let's move on to our segment. What's on your mind? Each host is going to tell us. Uh, in just 30 seconds, what is important to them this week. But remember, host, in just 30 seconds, or you're going to hear this bell. All right, ready? Power Infinity, what's on your mind this week? Well, along with the fact that um, Biden has made it possible now for trans to serve in the military this week, um, he, is also, he also signed an executive order which states Children should be able to learn without worrying about whether they will be denied access to the restroom, the locker room, or school sports. Um, it sees no specific guidelines governing the participation of transgender athletes. And so because of this, we're seeing a lot of backlash from those that are transphobic and from those on the right. This is another example of why we need to stand with our trans brothers and sisters, because they are the front line of attack um, in, this, in this day and age. All right, excellent. Scott Galvin, what's on your mind this week? I'm stunned that so many people that I went to high school with, I still live in my hometown. But so many people that I went to high school, same teachers, same classes, are such pro-Trump zealots. 
I'm still having to try to wrap my head around that even as we move past the Trump era. How did so many of my friends become so diametrically opposed to where I am? Hmm, interesting. All right, and Chef Josie, what's on your mind this week? Well, what's on my mind are the many projects I have on the burners right now. So you guys need to make sure that you're following me on all social media outlets. at Chef Josie. That's how you find me. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want. Follow me because there are some incredible announcements coming in the next couple of months and you want to know all about it. Excellent. All right. And Faye, what? What's on your mind this week? So I'm thinking about diapers, guys. Okay. No parent should have to choose between food or diapers for their children. And Miami yeah. Beach Police Department is doing an incredible thing. They launched um, Operation Diaper Duty. If you go and drop off diapers over there at, at uh, 1100 Washington Avenue in Miami Beach, they are giving all these diapers out to families in need. So from now, to, uh, to February 4th, go by there. Instead of getting arrested or doing something bad, drop off some diapers at the Miami Beach Police Department. I never thought I would ever be talking around the kitchen table about diapers. It happens. Yeah. Athena Dion, what's on your mind this week? Can we wish Betty White a happy 99th yes. birthday? Yes. <laughs> and Dolly Parton 75. And Dolly Woo! Parton 75. These are some cheer me up news, right? They're still around. They're still kicking and doing amazing things for us. Two humanitarians, right? Two huge humanitarians. Um, and the Dolly Parton, I don't know if you guys remember that she was the one that funded the one of the vaccines. Um, she donated a million dollars in the beginning of the um, research. So yeah, big shout out to Dolly Parton. I'm just yeah. living for the divas. Excellent. And David Hopkins, what's on your mind this week? The past week, I have been irritated by keyboard Karens. Life's tough right now. A lot of people are struggling to survive, especially here in South Florida, where it's a lot of service industry. People need to go out and be able to enjoy their lives safely, distanced, masks. And when people are doing it safely, they should do it without being shamed online. Excellent. All right. So uh, let's move out of what's on your mind. And uh, now we're going to discuss around our uh, little table here. If we were standing around the LGBTQ water cooler up next, what would we all be talking about? We refer to it as our hot topic of the week. It's Holocaust Memorial Day. And we ask why the LGBTQ community should remember. Adolf Hitler created a list of homosexuals for Nazi Germany. He then rounded up 100,000 LGBTQ people and imprisoned them. More than 15,000 were placed in concentration camps that were created not just for Jews. While, their gays, while there, gays were mutilated and tortured to try to find out why they were homosexual. Thousands died. Nazism was the greatest humanitarian disaster in history. So today is Holocaust Memorial Day. In Nazi Germany in 1939, my friend Power Infinity has frequently noted there were Jews for Hitler. Today, we are reminded with the election, peaceful transition of power, attack on the Capitol, log cabin Republicans and hashtag walk away, and what we have witnessed in the last four years, there can be gays for Trump. The day is for remembrance. What do y'all think about today? We should never forget all the people who perished. And it saddens me. It, it really does. It's, it's scary stuff what happened. I mean, they, they took some of us and did experiments on us, guys, just to see why we were gay and how to ungay us. I mean, and the numbers can never be accurate because they'll never really know how many were picked up and how many were massacred in, in such an awful way. I think it's just such yeah. a pointed reminder of, of what we kind of dodged right now. You know what I mean? We saw the country going in a certain way, and I think we stepped up to the plate and we stopped it. And um, today's like today, we remember that back then, I'm sure people said, oh, this will never happen. This could never happen. And it happened, and it happened horrifically. And um, like it's the biggest stain on humanity to date. And I think that we maybe dodged another one. So you got to remember that. You know, what I'm, uh, what I'm remembering right now is the fact that there were people who stood and, and stood witness to it all and stayed quiet for whatever reason and allowed it to happen, allowed it to begin like where we were headed with Donald Trump and stayed quiet as we saw racism nurtured, as we saw hatred watered, as we saw all of these different movements and the violence increase. That is what happened in South Africa during the apartheid. That's what happened in, in Nazi, uh, during Nazi Germany. This is, this is 
where right now, if we're remembering anything, it's we're remembering the the absence of courage. And um, I'm hoping that uh, today really lights a spark uh, in the people and the viewers and in the world right now who remembers that right now is a time for courage and moving forward into this life and into this future, uh, whatever that looks like, we, we must have courage. I think outside of the fact that we should remember, not just because um, it's part of uh, lessons to be learned for our LGBTQ community, but just for humanity. Um, I mean, I, I have been obsessed with the, um, with the, uh, the Holocaust for years growing up as a child because I close my eyes and I try to imagine what that would have been like for me to be rounded up, to be separated from family, to have all my rights ripped away, to be placed in the most degrading and brutal um, concentration camps, you know, to be starved, to be beaten, to suffer cold, to suffer torture, um, you know, just how, how does that feel? And, and sometimes we can't really, we think of it as a story, as a fairy tale, but we cannot really um, imagine that it happened for real. And when it comes to our community, I just want just to um, note a little bit of facts. The Association of German National Jews, which was the name of the, the organization that were Jews for um, Hitler, um, it was founded in 1921 by Max Neumann, um, who was its chairman until 1926. And again, from 1933 to 1935. Now, despite the, the extreme patriotism of Newman and his colleagues, the German government did not accept their goal of assimilation and in fact um, declared them illegal and dissolved, dissolved them on uh, November 18, 1934. Newman was arrested by the Gestapo the same day and imprisoned. So there you have it, the fact that you sit there and you support somebody who is anti you, anti your right to live, can only end um, badly for you. And this is a lesson for our community because we see this now with Trump. Yeah. Al, if I can jump in on that, I think it's really important to remember, um, obviously here in South Florida, we have a vibrant uh, Jewish community. Well, my partner is from Oklahoma and they didn't teach the Holocaust at all in his high school classes. So we'd like to think, wow, everybody's learning about this. They need to remember the lessons. In some places, the lessons aren't being taught. Well, and our world is notorious for ignoring the big travesties. Plenty of people in America knew nothing about speaking to Oklahoma Black Wall Street. Plenty of people in America didn't know about the Japanese internment camps during the World War. You, you know, we, we like to ignore um, tragedies and people being just evil unless you shove it in people's face and that's you know it goes back to you have to speak up for inju against injustice even if it's not you if you see injustice you need to be brave enough to speak up against it you know uh, before we move on i just make the observation i have so many of my friends that say oh i hate to talk about politics i wish we didn't have to talk about politics i don't want to hear about politics i don't want to read about politics but this conversation and this day is exactly why unfortunately we have to keep it in front of us mm -hmm. because if we don't continue to discuss what is at stake then our rights are lost and worse. And the number one thing that I come away with on January 6th is those people that stormed and what we saw in beating police officers and using American flags and rainbow flags to beat our public servants that are only doing their job to defend our capital and our democracy is, and to walk in to cheer um, over and over again uh, to kill uh, Mike Pence, our Vice President of the United States, that is on their supportive side, the pendulum can swing at any moment. And if we are not vigilant, the loss of everything is possible. And that's what this day reminds us of. And it's not just uh, the Jews in Germany. It was the homosexuals in Germany also. It's a very important, important day. All right, coming out of uh, the uh, Holocaust Memorial Day, uh, we want to move to something a little lighter. And there's lots of silly and important headlines in the news this week. We want to discuss them in our segment called Saved by the Bell. 
but there's a twist. We are only going to discuss each one of these topics for just one minute. At the end of that minute, you're going to hear that bell and it means that you've got to stop immediately and we're going to move on. Everybody understand what we're getting ready to do? So here we go. Europe is cracking down on internet providers that do not provide internet personal security, especially related to sexual privacy. Saved by the Bell headline number one. Norway this week has slapped Grindr with a whopping $12 million fine for privacy violations. What do you think? Pay the money. You've got it, Grinder. How much money you make last year? $150 million? Pay the $12 million and up your security. Yeah, this will never happen in America because we don't care about privacy. There's a new gay <laughs> dating app called Sniffer or Sniffy or something like that. And it's like Pokemon Go, except for you can see exactly on a map where the gay people are. <laughs> that's so creepy, stalkerish. You make yeah, the joke, but that's exactly what Norway said. Yeah. We can find and track uh, LGBT people through their privacy violations. Other thoughts. Isn't Big Brother already watching us everywhere and everything that we're doing anyway? I mean, I, I don't get this. You know, that's why a lot of people are getting off WhatsApp now because it's not going to be encrypted anymore and all that kind of stuff. I'm, if I think about it or have a conversation with anybody here about something, it pops up on my Facebook feed. You're going to tell me that that's just, ooh, coincidence? I'm, I'm just curious. Does anybody see a contradiction in that we scream bloody murder about everything in the LGBTQ community until it has something to do with our sex lives? <laughs> That's where we draw the line. We're just not going to go to Norway looking for trade, that's all. <laughs> right, exactly. All right. Old, old, old. Okay. Uh, this week, a plane pulling a giant banner flew hours along Palm Beach <laughs> and the former Florida Winter White House. <laughs> Saved by the Bell headline number two. Trump is being trolled with pathetic loser sky banner <laughs> near Mar-a-Lago. A second banner was pulled saying Trump was the worst president ever. Did you guys know if you zoom in on that video, Melania's flying the plane? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's wearing that dress she wore this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh I was hoping somebody was going to do this, you know, and of course it happened. I want that big baby blimp from London that they oh. had, the Trump in a big, as a big baby. They oh, should yeah. fly that over Live now. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm here to admit it. It was the best money I ever spent. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting here looking at power going, come on, come out, Tears come out. Joy, <laughs> yeah. 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 Which did you like better, uh, worst president ever or loser Trump? I like Worst loser president. Trump. <laughs> loser like Trump it. will hit him right where it he ha he hates that yeah. word. He yeah. hates that word. Yeah. 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 And I love it that it was flown on the most clearest day in South Florida. There was not a cloud in the sky. <laughs> right. Beautiful. Uh, uh, oh, I, we love it. All right. SpaceX says the first private citizens are going to space. And they're going to be staying at the new Marriott Space Station. Have you heard of it? No. Well, Saved by the Bell headline number three. The first private space crew is paying $55 million each to fly to the station. What Hold do you on. think? They're paying $55 to work. Million. They're paying to work. <laughs> no, no they're not going to work. <laughs> Two things that will push technology faster than anything are war and capitalism. Let them pay it because, you know, we've gotten so much from the space race back when uh, Kennedy was president. This will just fuel more technology. I have a friend out in California who keeps inviting me on these uh, private space rides. And it's like, I don't even believe that it's possible. But clearly, I'm not paying attention. Uh, so, um, yeah. It's well. one of them games. Does, any, does anybody remember yes. where they were when um, the Space Challenger exploded? I watched I, it. I've seen my, I've seen I my young this, but you know, I remember I was in drama class in the seventh or eighth grade, and mm -hmm. the, the teacher, our teacher, had rolled. Remember the, the, the TVs that you used to roll out for the yeah. students? Yeah. Our teacher had rolled out the TV for us to see the Challenger. It was such a big day for students, and then it blew up right in in front of our face. And that yeah. has traumatized me ever since. So I, I don't think I would be paying any money to go. Girl, yeah, I didn't say that, but I've seen movies enough, and I am not going to space anytime soon, baby. <laughs> right, right. So, Unless you know, I'm Sigourney Weaver, you know, that bitch is It's funny. I would do it in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Yeah. Did, did they get frequent flyer miles? <laughs> yeah, they would be big. All right. In 2017, whitehouse.gov 
removed all mentions of LGBTQ. Remember? Yep. So uh -huh. Save by the Bell headline number four. In 2021, you can now choose your pronouns on WhiteHouse.gov's contact form. <laughs> love That's it. Keep awesome. it coming. Keep it coming. I love I'm it. So happy that the White House is catching up with reality. Yeah, I mean, look, we've said it so many times on this show, the White House, the administration, our politics, our government, they're the ones who influence the trends that are in the world that we're living in. And, you know, when we start seeing leadership lead by example with uh, an inclusive message, an inclusive agenda, then we start to see that adopted by the people of the U.S. and around the world. We are the leaders of the world, and this is a great sign. For us. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to extend the time just a little, uh, host prerogative here, but the right, the ultra-right is saying, um, uh, their argument against this is, I declare I'm a hamburger, and now I call myself a hamburger, and oh. you can't deny that I'm a hamburger. Is that kind of ludicrous argument going to work against pronouns and pronoun use? Well, it's, a, it's all good. Don't you see it says other down there? Yeah. <laughs> Call yourself a hamburger if that's what you want. Okay, all right. Well, you know, that's, that's a good Real. enough answer for me. All right. Uh, a picture of a crotchety and cold Bernie Sanders, we showed that to you in Meme of the Week, wearing <laughs> unique mittens turned into a thousand hilarious memes seen by a billion times this week. It comes to find out, we come to find out, the maker of the gloves is part of our family. Saved by the bell, number five. Meet the queer school teacher, lesbian Jen Ellis, who made Bernie's inauguration mittens. Can we just give her a round of applause? Yes. I mean, I'm just so... So happy for this lady. I hope that, you know, she's a school teacher, but I hope that she gets a lot of business from this. And it's just great to see humble, meek people really get the spotlight and get the shine. She deserves every single minute of this celebration. I'm actually kind of bitter because when I was a kid living in Maine, mittens were only for kids. So when you got older, you weren't allowed, it wasn't cool to wear them. They keep your hands so much warmer. Like, I'm glad Bernie's bringing mittens back. You know, interesting <laughs> that you mentioned uh, Power Your Observation. Of all of the things, I mean, she is a walking stereotype of the L of our community. She's married. She has a child. She's living in rural Vermont. She's, you know, and blah, blah, blah. She's wearing that sweater. She's wearing that sweater, et cetera, et cetera. I have not seen any attacks on her over this about being a lesbian. Isn't that some progress? No, that's beautiful. She can't even keep up with demand, guys. Like, people are, like, sweating her hard for these gloves. I mean, they're not even that cute, but now that I've seen them a million times, now I'm like, I want a I pair. I live in South mittens. Florida. I never need mittens, but I want a pair. <laughs> You'll see him on the runway next fall. Yes, exactly. I saw her on <laughs> CNN. I saw her yeah. on CNN, and she so innocently said, you know, this is kind of a surprise because it crashed my Google. <laughs> that Alex, awesome? I feel like you would say Awesome, that. awesome. Yeah. All right. That's our Save by the Bell headlines uh, for tonight. Uh, we're uh, starting to end the show. And, of course, we before we do that, uh, we're the LGBTQ community. So let's have some sex and relationships. Let's play another game. Um, and our game Ask who would you do why you do it, and what you would do with three different people. Uh, different people uh, tonight, and our game is called Shag, Mary Chop. And our theme is trans love. So this week, we're going to play with model Andreja Pajic, model, and then RuPaul's Drag Race season 13 star, and the first trans contestant ever on the show, Got Mick. And last, but certainly not least, model and fitness guru, Ben Metzer, who was the first person uh, ever on men's fitness on the cover. First so, uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, let's play Shag, Mary Chop. And David, let's start with you. Oh, yeah, I'm excited about this. So, I used to be the one who would pick these, and we have previously used Ben Metzer because I thought he was hot as hell. So, he's my shag for sure. Uh, my Mary is Andreja. Um, she is beautiful. Um, she also is in an amazing short film called Baghdad, Florida, where her and two friends come down from New York to the town of Baghdad, Florida, 
And uh, you know, they, they actually find a much more accepting community than you would think, and it's an amazing film. Um, and I, I, I gotta chop got milk. I uh, got milk. I haven't watched this season of RuPaul. I'm very happy they're on this season of RuPaul, but yeah. And why are you chopping him? Um, because I'm shagging Ben and Mary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, for the learning compared of us, uh, which includes me. Power. Uh, who would you shag here? Easy for me. Um, I'm gonna shag got milk. Um, only really because I have to shag somebody and um, I want to get him out of the way so I can get to Ben. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I'm going to marry Ben and have babies with him and we're going to live happily ever after. And I'm um, quite sure that Andre, Andreja is a beautiful woman, but you know, her vagina and my vagina, we can't do nothing but be friends. That ain't going to work. I got it. And um, uh, Chef Josie, who uh, who are you going to shag this week? Um, all right. So I'll go with Ben. We can get the bromance out of the way. And then I'm definitely Mary Andresia. She's hot. Yeah. Really. Beautiful. She looks super classy and yeah. sophisticated, just my type. And uh, Got Mick is like looking like one of the club kids I used to do a lot of drugs with and dance on the dance floor. So I, 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 I'm already beyond that 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 stage in my life. Oh wait a minute! I've got a call coming in from Got Mick. Uh, let me... <laughs> I'm like sorry, girl. And, and uh, Faye, uh, who is your shag this week in our in our trans uh, game? So I'm gonna shag Ben. Uh, he just looks incredible to. Shag. Now, yeah. uh, can I ask um, uh, the two uh, uh, biological women on uh, on the show, uh, Ben? Both of you uh, are shagging uh, him. Is there any reason why did it make it? Did, did the ultimate gender identification make any difference to you? None at all. None. You just. None. He's the guy. He's the guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And I'm gonna marry Mick uh, because I love him. I love him on Drag Race, and uh, his style is everything. And I just feel that I can get some amazing outfits out of it. <laughs> and um, Andresia, uh, you know, I've had my share of models in the past. You know, mm, whatever. Wait, Go are you the growing shade at the models? Wait, why? Why don't you embrace models? All right, you've done them, but but what's the negative of They don't it? eat. I need a girl who eats. I need to sit in front of a girl and watch her eat a plate of food and do it with no problem That's at all. That's why she that loves me so much. Is, oh, I can't. I'm going to die and have a shoot tomorrow. No, 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 no. Yeah, not going to work? Eat. Uh, eat. All right. And take them to Bubbles and Pearls and eat. Got Those it. Those oysters and that lobster roll is incredible. Oh, watch a woman eat a lobster roll at Bubbles and Pearls. Oh, it'll change your life. <laughs> all right. Very good. And Athena Dion, uh, I'm really dying. I've saved you for last who are you gonna shag well ben looks so shaggable so that's definitely a shag maybe one two three four five times but it's shaggable. <laughs> um i don't know if i want to chop or marry god mick because i may marry her because of the the drag that we could have together you know what i mean because they've got some amazing drag but i also want to chop her for that reason <laughs> okay. drag is so good girl it's gotta be out of my about, way it's gotta be all about you and uh, yeah it does and i don't know who andrea is so she gets whatever i don't do to mick yeah I, i'm curious athena have you dated uh a drag queen i've dated uh trans women uh and i my oh. first boyfriend was a drag queen actually too oh. so i'm all over the spectrum and, and, and that wasn't um a problem uh, dating a drag queen i wasn't a drag queen when i dated her but um would it be today yeah it would be especially that particular one yeah <laughs> <laughs> and what was his name i'm um, not gonna say <laughs> i feel like i might be able to guess okay oh oh well after the show i'm gonna find that out all right well before speaking of that we end the show we would like to uh introduce our sponsor which is jets pizza and i'm holding up uh, what I like a lot, uh, which is the uh, cauliflower pizza. It uh, is one of the most popular places to get pizza here in uh, South Florida. They're all over the country. It's destroy uh, Detroit uh, style pizza, and uh, you've got to try it. Uh, our host uh, tonight, right after the show, are going to be enjoying it, and we're getting ready uh, to enjoy it. And we thank Jets Pizza for uh, their uh, generous sponsorship of its happening out. Well, that's it, America. Another week with you and the world's first and most popular LGBTQ talk show uh, in the entire world. And before we sign off, let's hear from our host uh, one final uh, good night. And uh, let's begin with Power Infinity. 
Well, good night, children. Thank you once again for joining us right here on It's Happening Out. Uh, join us tomorrow, uh, Thursday night at 8 o'clock for our Gay Town Hall. And make sure to be right back here next week, Wednesday at 8 o'clock, for another edition of It's Happening Out. Thank you, Power. And a good night from our longest serving uh, politician in the state of Florida. And that's not an age joke, uh, Scott Galvin. It's a beautiful world that we live in, and it's beautiful to be with all of you tonight. Um, I can't wait to be back with you again. Have a wonderful evening. Scott, we've appreciated you joining us tonight. And uh, Safe Schools uh, is the organization he leads in addition to his political duties. It's a very valuable uh, 501c3 here in South Florida to help uh, the identity and sexual identity protection in our schools for LGBTQ youth. And next up, good night from David Hopkins. Hey, good night, everybody. And join me on February 14th, Valentine's Day at 3 p.m. Eastern for our Lambda's Love in a Thon charity telethon. Um, we'll be streaming thanks to Happening Out Television Network and Underground Wilma. Excellent. Sounds like a great, uh, a great charity event. And good night from Top Chef, Chef Josie. Hey guys, I know it seems like, uh, you know, the coronavirus is behind us. We have a new administration. Seems like everything is on the up and up. But let's stay, you know, vigilant about our uh, staying safe and staying healthy, staying mindful of each other. And you guys just, you know, stay safe, stay healthy, stay positive, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, stay positive. That's a great challenge. And uh, a good night from Faye. What? Faye, what? Mm -hmm. Make sure you guys go on my YouTube channel and subscribe today and share all the links and all that fun stuff. And make sure you catch me here on Mondays and Wednesdays on Q News with my main man, white privilege, Mr. <laughs> Al Ferguson <laughs> in the house. Wait, was that shade? Did somebody... You're too pasty for shade. And, and uh, uh, from one anchor to two new ones, David Hopkins and Faye Watt, congratulations on a great uh, launch for the new travel show. And uh, we wish you all the luck. Absolutely. And um, a good night uh, from Athena Dion. Well, thank you. It's happening, Al, for having me. It's a pleasure to share this platform with so many leaders in the community. If you are around in Miami on the weekends, come check me out at Our House Drag Brunch, Saturday and Sunday, 11.30 and 2.30 for the best drag show in town. And just so you know, Valentine's Day, we're doing a dinner show. Uh, so if you have no plans with your loved one or somebody you would like to be your loved one, come and treat them to a fabulous drag show starting at 7.30 on Valentine's Sunday night. Excellent. So, America, we ask you, is what you watch tonight important to you? We've talked about a lot of different things here in just an hour. You sat right here at the kitchen table right along all of us. We could have done this in somebody's house and it would have almost been the exact same thing. We challenge you. What an amazing week we've had in watching in the transition of the end of the Trump era, thank goodness, uh, and the banners that are flying right now over Mar-a-Lago, and the implementation of a new era of uh, President Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris. It's an exciting time for the LGBTQ community. To all of those people that have said to me in the last week, well, Trump's gone. What do you got to say now? We have a lot to say, and we're going to show it to you every Wednesday night. If it's important to you, it's happening on Wednesdays at 8 o'clock on It's Happening Out. Good night, America. Cheers. <laughs>